Hey yeah. there, everybody, and welcome to the Day Tripper Photo Show. Tonight is about what's in your bag, baby. It's a question I will pose to these fellows beside me. And how are you both doing today? Doing good. Awesome. Good. Good, I was, good. I was the sicky bagicky guy there over on this side. <laughs> I think oh, he means you. True. So basically the rule is that what I learned is if you ever go to a friend's house and they say, sit down for dinner, my son's got a little bit of touch of the stomach flu, but everything will be fine. Don't bother running. You're already screwed. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you were knocked out for about over a week, weren't you? No, it, it was it was, it hit me Friday night. Uh, Saturday, I could only get out of bed to do the unmentionables, and um, <laughs> it's like, like, hey, I haven't eaten those since high school. Oh god! <laughs> oh no! Way to start oh, the show. It was. I lost four pounds in in under forty eight hours. It was wow. impressive. It's a new fad diet. <laughs> you, you should publish the name of the, the place you went to. Everybody will want that diet. <laughs> oh, sad panda. <laughs> yeah, it was not fun. But the only, I mean, you know, no matter how sick, no matter how sick I was, you know, run to the bathroom, do everything you need to do, pull out the antiseptic wipes, wipe <laughs> down the toilet, wipe down everything that I touched because if Jaden got it, oh, God. I mean, Trish. It would suck if Trish got it too, but I mean, a four-year-old with those things would just maybe he was the carrier. Lots of laundry, yes. Maybe he was the carrier. <laughs> yeah, he's just oh, a carrier. Be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the sicknesses going around these days have been absolutely brutal. Yeah, I never get I'm sick. I got sick, so. Well, I'm glad you're better. Actually, yeah. oh, I'm unfrozen too. I can see myself move. Yay! Yay! Okay, that's so much more comforting when I can actually see my own video moving when we're doing this show. Anyway, it's a vanity thing. It is a handy thing. So tonight's show is on what's in your bag. Um, <laughs> I said vanity, but vanity? it's good that you heard handy. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> uh, you're all fired. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you're feeling better, Gabriel. Thank you for being on tonight and for already getting me once. So, uh, <laughs> um, tonight's show is inspired by an email that we got. Um, we're going to get to it in a second. Uh, uh, somebody was having some trouble choosing a bag for their for their camera gear. So we thought, hey, let's talk about camera bags and what you fill them with and what you would use on a daily shoot and things like that. A lot of people do the what's in your bag thing. Uh, so we figured, hey, let's do that too. Uh, <laughs> um, now, what have you guys been up to this week? I know, Gabriel, you weren't feeling that well. I know Darren and I shot a pretty cool Ontario Junior Hockey League game together. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Darren's shots were better than mine, of course. No, yeah. they weren't. Oh, are you kidding? You got some awesome shots. And in fact, Gabriel yeah, went good shots. Yeah, we were talking just before, uh, before you came onto the show tonight about the ISO noise from the D7100. Um, for all those watching, I've got my new camera. Um, we're calling it the Schwartz. We had a panel. Smoke uh, meat. That's <laughs> Schwartz's Deli. Not exactly what it's named after. A little Spaceballs reference there for uh, those that are kind of our age and remember that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, so yeah, I got this camera and I was shooting hockey the first time with it and it was great. It was fast. Wasn't it fast? Darren got to borrow it. It was really fast. You didn't even put in a memory card. It was that fast. I know. It was like <laughs> shooting before I even took it out of the camera bag. And uh, <laughs> it was put it on a lens hood. Is that Darth Helmet? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yes, actually, it is Darth Helmet. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to change the uh, the password on my camera bag lock lock now. So something every idiot would have on their luggage. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we were shooting this, and it was focusing faster than I was used to, and it was shooting like, up to seven frames per second. I was getting shots of the goalie like it was right in front of me, and I'm looking at the back of my screen. it was really, really quiet. And it was really quiet, wasn't it? The oh, feel yeah. of that shutter. It's just beautiful. I'm so used to Mr. Snaps flapping away. Flap, 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 flap. Not this guy. Anyway, loved using it. Uh, the pictures looked fantastic on the back of the screen, and I told Darren, guess what? It's not going to look that good when I get it home. And sure enough, 
It didn't. Darren said, I don't think it's going to look as good as you see it here at home. Yes. <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, but, the, yeah. the back of the screen kind of plays games with you sometimes. But and, there's nothing uh, wrong with those photos. I mean, maybe you're just being a little too critical. <laughs> you know what? Sorry, I'm not laughing at that. Blake made a comment. It's Darth Helmet only if you're using the 14 to 24. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Um, yeah, no, it, I loved using the camera, and the pictures, the, the ISO noise really does start to show at about 1250. And you know what's weird, and weirder than I expected? Um, the light just turned down. Yeah. <laughs> Got to fix <laughs> My, my whole studio here. Anyway, um, what I really didn't expect was that 25,600 ISO looked virtually the same as 1600 ISO. Uh, we did a little comparison before you showed up here, Darren, between the two images, and it's pretty obvious. Now, they're all on the Google Plus community page, so if anybody wants to actually check that out for themselves, the EXIF data is intact, so you can go on there, check out the last photos that I uploaded from the, from the hockey, and you can see the ISO noise for yourself. So yeah, I heard Scott Bourne talking about it on a podcast this morning, and he was saying that that the advantage of removing the anti-aliasing filter, which they did on the D7100, is that you get sharper images. But then uh, noise is a lot more noticeable at lower ISOs, and he was noticing um, noticeable noise around 850. And it also, well, this is the most video capable um, digital SLR that Nikon has made, removing the anti-aliasing filter. Um, really can cause a lot of problems for shooting video. So it's interesting. It's interesting to see what they're going to do. And a lot of this stuff, like the noise on, on lower ISOs, can all be fixed in, in firmware. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm looking forward to some firmware updates. But until <laughs> then, until then, I'm not worrying about it. I'm quite happy with what I've got. Um, and the reason I bought the crop sensor wasn't necessarily for that application. It was more so for wildlife and for mm -hmm. other things where I'm outside. I need to really pull things in much, much closer. The mm -hmm. speed and everything that it offers and the feel, and I just love the way it works, um, it's absolutely perfect for what I want. And if I need that low light, I'll pull out Mr. Snaps, and I won't have any issues up to 4,000. So, so you, what you'll have to do is you'll have to shoot at 1,200 with your D700, and shoot at 1,200 with your um, Schwartz, and then – magnify or zoom in, crop the D700, and see if the uh, resolution reduction loss in that is worse than the noise of the D7100. Hmm. Yeah, and I'd also like to, the uh, next game we shoot, I'm also going to try the, I, the high ISO noise reduction turned on. It was turned off for this, so I'll see if there's any in raw. Interesting. Shooting in raw. It wouldn't affect it, would it? Then, yeah, it makes, makes no difference. Right, that's right. Mm -hmm. But only if you're wearing a green sock and a blue sock. I've heard that. With Canon, it's it's yellow and red. But well, and pink underwear. <laughs> See, with Canon, you don't have to do the underwear. Canon rocks. Just tell me lightning isn't involved in any way, and I'll be happy. Okay. As long as I don't have lightning hitting a satellite dish coming out my butt, it's all good. So, yeah. <sighs> Too many TV references from me. Anyway, let's get back on track here, guys. Um, okay, we'll try. There's a track. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd like to. I'd just like to mention, throwing us off track again. Can't remember who it was, um, or or where it was, but somebody asked uh, in in some communication whether Gabriel is to this show what Gino is mm. to Trey Ratcliffe's show. Um, that was funny. Well, I'm sure Gino is a nice person. He is one of my less favorite people on the internet. <laughs> he, he, he just, he cannot let people go four sentences without butting in and and making some totally off-topic, ill thought-out joke, and it drives me nuts. And the last time, I actually had to stop watching the show because he wouldn't stop making fun of gay people and making all these homosexual slurs and stuff like that. It just drove me insane. So. To whoever said that, you hurt me more than you could ever know. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no I hope I'm not that. So, because <laughs> I try not to be. <laughs> oh no, no, no! You're not Gino. And you know what? I I have to admit, like I have some. Sometimes I, I'm not a very aggressive person. I'm a little more, more passive, and sometimes if I'm around very aggressive people, I kind of feel uncomfortable. So there just would not be that kind of personality um, 
on my show. I guess is that a nice way to say it? No, I mean I, I, I love show when you invite me back every week. So, well, it wouldn't be the same without you. And uh, <laughs> it's awesome that you're on here. And don't ever worry about uh, <laughs> being something that you're not because you're kick ass anyway. Um, Red then is kind of like yeah. So what would, bit. <laughs> what would that make Darren then? If you're Gino, who would Darren be? Darren. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not Trey, but. <laughs> Where did the sound effects go? There used to be sound effects in this thing. I was going to uh, give you a Gino sound effect when you were giving your speech, but uh, I couldn't find the sound effects. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's, the show's about what's in your bag, not what sound effects can we make to annoy other people on the show. Yeah. So, what's in your bag, and why do we want to talk about it? Well, leading to that, first we're going to give you our creative corner. Oh, wait a second. Is there more to talk about here? Getting excited about, oh, meteor shower. Guys, we've got this meteor shower thing coming up. For those of you who don't know, and I always start a sentence for those of you who don't know for some reason, um, on Monday night, the 22nd of April, there is the big meteor shower going on, and a bunch of us in the Day Tripper Photo community are going to be getting together and going to a really great place. The place is chosen, we which we will announce officially on the Day Tripper Photo community and on Google+, Plus, of course. So this place is going to be awesome. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're going to be doing some shots of, of the meteors swinging past. Of course, they're just going to be lines in the sky, but we'll have some fun. I'm going to yank out the Brinkmans, and that's part of uh, what we're going to talk about in a few minutes, about what's in our bag, what's in our kit. Um, I was there last night, and I took some shots, and I didn't really give myself the time to make really great photos, so I just took a, a few as like a reference, and I'm going to kind of share some of those with you guys in just a second here before I open up two windows that I shouldn't have opened. Um, the place is so great. There's a couple of ponds we can get to. There are uh, some barns, and there's all kinds of great things, but here's a quick shot that I made last night that kind of emphasizes the light painting concept that we're talking about. And open. There it is. Okay. Here we go. So this is just one of the uh, the first spot that we walk uh, we would walk into, and then we can go way down further. And if you can see where that tree is off to uh, the left side of the screen, there's actually a road that goes past that up onto a big hill, where we're going to overlook a lot more and get a lot better view. Um, you can kind of see the the light painting that I did there with the the Brinkmans. I lit up across the pond there and uh, lit up a little bit in front. So we're going to be able to take our time and make some much more interesting looking photos. And it's great because there's nobody around. We don't have to worry about shining lights in people's eyes or anything. And it's right in the middle of New Market. So for those of you who are interested, please feel free to join the Day Tripper Photo community and let us know if you want to come along. So far, we're up to about 12 people. So that'll be a nice little trip. And both of you guys are coming, aren't you? Yeah, yeah you're bringing the Brinkmans and Gabriel's bringing the Baileys. Yes. Oh, by the way, Actually, go ahead. I was just going to say, just so people will know, this is not a day trip or photo session. Uh, we're going back there on June 23rd for the actual day trip or photo session at Joker Hill. Where we'll be doing things like this then with instruction and lenses and all kinds of other cool things to use as well. So what we're doing now is just a bunch of good people going out and taking pictures on your own. Um, if you want to use the light that we use when we're lighting up the thing to make your own photo, fine, go ahead. Otherwise... It's just a bunch of photographers out having a good time. So what were you saying, Gabriel? Yeah. Oh, I was just... Uh, I'm going to bring... Um, it's like Bailey's, but it's by Forty Creek. And if you've ever had Forty Creek, it's Canadian-made. It's from just around the corner. It's probably the best whiskey I've ever had in my, in my life. And they make a, a Bailey's... It's not a Bailey's competitor. It's it's similar to Bailey's, but it's a thousand times better. You just put a little bit of that in your coffee or your hot chocolate, and I'm going to bring some of that for the night. Awesome. Just to keep us a little bit warm. Well, I'll be bringing my coffee, so I will mash it with your special stuff there. Cool. We'll drink responsibly. Don't worry. That's a good idea. <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh, and um, yes. Hello. Hi, Mom. Mom's watching again, guys. So <laughs> My mom loves watching our show. I love it. <laughs> she, actually, my mother is a great photographer. She shoots down. She lives in Florida, and she does a lot of shooting down by Alligator Alley and 
oh, some cool. of the some of the bird shots she gets and the alligator shots and the you know these herons that we get up here but are much more lively looking down there much mm -hmm. bigger and fresher um, with their babies giving them babies uh, like giving them food and stuff some of her shots are fantastic so cool one day we'll get mom but, on here to share some of her photos from Florida is that why there's so many old people in Florida because they keep feeding them the babies <laughs> You know, it's funny. When I uh, first visited my mom down there, she told me about the expression, the Q-tips. Uh, any idea what the Q-tips are? No? Okay. In Florida, there are quite a few old people, and they have, you know, white hair. So when they're driving hey. their car, and you're looking from behind, all you can see is the little Q-tip over the top of the seat. So that's a contribution from my mom, who lives in Florida, and she has the right to say that. So. <laughs> Okay. Blue heron, blue heron fedoras, they'll get you every time. <laughs> blue heron fedoras. Okay. Old people, blue hair and fedoras. Ah, yes, yes. Um, okay, so meteor shower. We talked about the OJHL finals. Um, and then go, let's just go over some gear that we're going to talk about in just a second. The creative corner is important, though. we got to give this creative corner out. Um, the reason why we give you a creative corner is to have you listen to what we're talking about and then challenge yourself. So um, I've just found, you know, I've just got this new camera. I've got a whole bunch of new stuff in my kit, some new flashes and so on. Uh, I just picked all kinds of new stuff up. And I'm really excited about that. Um, but I'm, I need to get the most out of it. I need to make sure I use it more. So for me, a challenge with getting new gear is learning how the changes will help me make better photos. Like we get all this gear, but how do they ha actually help you make better photos? Um, one thing that I played with at the hockey game was the Wi-Fi shooting. That was pretty cool. I was able to connect my camera or my yeah my camera to my my phone. I held it way up high, and I got a shot of you know I was using my phone to actually take the photo. So I couldn't squeeze the trigger; it was up so high. It turned out great. I got a nice high point view. I ended up putting that right up onto um, I think I put it up to Facebook right away. And these are things that I'm probably going to end up doing a lot more. So now I'll be able to wirelessly trigger the Schwartz to capture images from distances, from different perspectives, and all kinds of cool things. Um, you know, I can mount it up higher. And I got one of the things I have in my bag is a really cool, um, it's a super clamp from Manfrotto. And now I'm able to take my camera or take my flashes, attach them to a clamp, and then stick them up on a pole or stick them up higher so I can trigger them remotely. Ah, there we go. I was waiting for that. There is the... <laughs> You know, I love the photo, but it makes me laugh. Usually I wear a hat to cover the solar panel, but it kind of looks like I have a... Well, a you can't beam. see it because there's a bright light just above your head that looks like it could be blowing out the hair that's there anyway. Uh, let's go with that. Let's just go with that. <laughs> so the challenge this week is to use a feature on your camera or use a technique that is exclusive to your camera, something that your camera has that maybe not every camera would have, and... Uh, make a different photo that you've ever really made before. So for me, it was, you know, what Darren's showing right now. I got uh, the shorts up there. And you can see that little light on on the side of it. Actually, could you zoom back into that for a sec? Yeah. Awesome. That little light that's on, on the side of the camera, that's the little GPS connector. I'll show it to you when I pull the camera out of the bag here. And it syncs to your phone. It creates its own Wi-Fi network. It syncs to your phone, and I can just press a button on my phone to take the picture. So I can put the camera in a very different place and be able to make a better photo. So again, the challenge this week is to use a feature or a technique that is exclusive to your camera and to make a different photo than you usually make. And for me, it was that. And that's what inspired for the Creative Corner. Uh, now, what inspired the show, actually, was this email that we got from Emma from Emsdale. Emsdale is actually up where I go to the cottage. We actually watched our, um, our fireworks display up in Emsdale. It's a really beautiful place. Anyway, hey guys, I'm loving your show. Uh, you all have a unique chemistry with each other, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, that's kind of an understatement, don't you think, guys? <laughs> um, I've been trying to, I've been trying your photo challenges, and I really do find that I'm getting more out of my photography than ever, which is awesome. So Emma, good on you. Keep it up. I'm glad you're enjoying the little uh, challenges that we give, and you keep on working at it. It's important. My question is, I went into a camera store the other day, and I was looking for a new camera bag. I shoot weddings part-time, and I also love to just throw my camera in a pack and head out for a long walk. It seems like I can't find anything that will really work well for both needs. I know Gabriel shoots weddings, and he always talks about hanging out with his son and shooting, so I thought you guys would be good to ask for this advice. 
Well, first of all, Emma, thank you for asking us for this advice, and it has led to an entire show, and um, I think that's fantastic. And it's true, Gabriel, when you uh, when you go out shooting, I mean, you do all kinds of things, right? You're doing weddings, you're doing mm -hmm. uh, portrait sessions, you're doing all kinds of things, but sometimes you just love grabbing the camera, and going to St. Lawrence Market, say, or going somewhere, and you've got Jaden with you, and, and Trish is with you, and you just want to have a good time and make some good photos. Yeah. So what do you find yeah. as far as camera bags? Like, do you have one bag to do everything? So my kit, what, what I bring with me doesn't change much no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm shooting a wedding or um, shooting corporate headshots. Well, corporate headshots because I have all my studio lighting and stuff that I bring. But if I'm if I'm just going out uh, with the family for for the day or, or, or anything, um, my kit is pretty much usually very similar. Um, what I carry it in varies a little bit, but um, I have about 600 camera bags. Uh, 598 of them sit in the closet most of the time. <laughs> it's awful. But um, I have my, my couple bags that I use all the time. I have my, my daily... Should I go into it now? Um, I thought well, you were going to go first. No, it doesn't matter if anybody... Yeah, you could go first, actually. Okay. But, um, yeah, sure, go right ahead. So, my first one, and I use this a lot for hiking, is uh, I, like, I love Think Tank. They're a great brand. Mm. So the Think Tank, and this is the Speed Freak, I think it is. Yeah, the Speed Freak. And so this is... Um, it uh, just clips on your waist. And I can fit, on, I can fit my 7D with the 24-105 and a couple lenses and some sunscreen and a fair amount of gear in there. So I really like this one. I actually originally bought it for shooting weddings, but the problem is once you actually put any gear in there, um, when I shoot weddings, I like getting up and down a lot. I'm, I'm always kneeling down or laying down or crouching, and that bag there really restricts my movement uh, a lot, so I end up not using it for weddings. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, this is um, when we do shoot weddings or when we go on long hikes. I've got this backpack here so we can get a little bit of a lunch up here and then some extra lenses and stuff. But we don't use this a lot. This is primarily held for just holding our gear when we're at home so we know where all of our gear is. That's the Slingshot 300? Uh, slingshot. It's the Low Pro. Yes. Slingshot 300. I had one of those, and I used it on a lot of my day trips, and I found that after a long day trip, it was always on one shoulder, and I'd be leaning back, you know, compensating so much that, you know, my hips were out, my back was sore. Mm -hmm. So I know it's a great bag. It holds a lot of things, but it did, you know, it was kind of sore for me to carry on a 15-hour day trip. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for really long, long, long days, it can, it can get a little sore. Um my day-to-day -day bag and it's one of my favorite bags and I've never I've never found this brand before seen this brand before it's called mm -hmm. Habnet I think Tenba. or no Tenba what did you backwards. call it? Hazmat? Habnet Habnet because <laughs> I was reading it backwards that's a good one so it just looks like a normal <laughs> laptop bag which is great because that's exactly what you want it to look like and it's already starting to get a little bit worn out, but you can see when you open it up. Sorry about the Velcro. So it's got tons of room on the inside. And I'll just angle this down a little bit. Not too low, Gabe. Yes, well, <laughs> I, I am wearing my Stewie, my, uh, my Stewie pajama bottoms. So <laughs> I actually broke tradition for my pants tonight on the show. <laughs> you what, you're wearing them? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not wearing my moose pants anymore. But anyway, go ahead. So I've got a water bottle that I clip on here, and then I've got an extra little detachable um, lens bag where I keep my 1020. Usually, when I'm when I'm out during the day, I have my 24105 and one other lens, usually my 1020 or my 50, but it's usually the 1020. Um, I got my MacBook Air in here, which usually runs Windows 8, but it's such a tiny, thin little laptop mm -hmm. that literally, I mean, I could have three of them in this laptop bag, 
and it takes up absolutely zero space whatsoever. So it's it's a fantastic laptop as far as that that's concerned. Um, so then I can fit my whole. This is my primary rig. This is my my go-to. So my 7D with my 24105, and that's what I do 99% of my shooting with. Um, and so it's got a nice big middle pocket here, and which fits that fully. Um, important <laughs> tool add there. Yes. Um, I've got a little satchel here with just a bunch of cables, like USB cables, um, fire wire, just any type of cable that I might run into on the road that I need. Um, card reader comes with me everywhere I go. And then my what I call my Starbucks saver. So it's a extension cord, kind of. One into four. So a lot of times you'll be at a Starbucks and there's you know three people that all want to use one plug. Well, you just plug this in and they can all just plug it into here. And everybody has power. Or if you have multiple devices that you need to plug in, and that works great. Uh, battery charger, I always have that on me. Um, and then my my Mac power cables, the the long and the short one as well as other USB power adapters. Well, and you do a lot of work uh, in remote locations as well, so for you to carry all your cords and connectors and extra power cords and stuff, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, I mean, it's well, pretty much a necessity. Is, yeah, and it doesn't take up a huge amount of room, which is really nice. Got mm -hmm. a gray card here, which I know my bag is, is a gray card pretty much as well, but I just like having a gray card just in case, because a lot of times... Um, <coughs> Ninety-nine percent of the time, if I'm if I'm going to do a do, do a job, this bag stays in the car. And not ninety-nine percent of the time, but a lot of times, I'll just leave this bag in the car, take my camera in with me, just using the rapid strap, and not even use a bag for the camera. So um, I have an extra extra gay gray card. Um, then, if you can believe it, I actually have a notebook. Mr. Being Mr. Anti Paper that I am, but I have this. I got it from Google a few years ago, and I use it for my like my really, 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 really important ideas, which means um, that's why I'm, that's why it's empty. <laughs> I like half a page. <laughs> you hate paper. I hate paper, so I mean I use it very sparingly. Um, I've got a backup hard drive, and then a secondary backup hard drive. So if I back up something. On my computer, I also back it up onto both of these. And usually, what I will do, if I'm coming back from a wedding, I'll back up onto this, and then I'll back up onto this, and then um, keep like one in the trunk and one up front with me. So if we get rear-ended, then the one in the front is probably okay. I just try and keep my data away from it, from you know the other data. So one, you know, hopefully, if there's some accident, one of them will still be in good shape. And then um, the other thing they always have on me is is my um, what do they call this? The speed belt. Yeah, I've got one of those myself. That's the ah yeah. um, oh, man. It's, it should say right on the back of it. Right there. This is the speed changer. Speed changer. There it is. And um, so in here, I just have a lens pen. I've got my um, my remote for the camera. So if I'm doing portraits, I always use a remote when I'm when I'm doing portraits or landscapes. I've got my card system here, so you just zip it out, and I've got all my cards in there. Um, batteries galore, so for my flashes, the whole thing stuff, you. tons Thanks. and tons of batteries. And then in much. the other pocket, I just have an Thank ND you. filter and a polarizing <laughs> filter, and that's it. Uh, with meat? Meat. Oh, okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. And that's my whole kit. That's everything. That's everything that, I mean, except for, Thank like, you. studio work or I have studio lights and, and a tripod okay. and stuff. Um, that's everything I carry with me for everything. And awesome. that does 
about a hundred, just about a hundred percent of everything, all the different types of shooting that I need to do, and it usually fits in, you know, one and a half bags or two bags. That's really cool. One and a half, two bags. See, that's the thing. Like, how many bags do most people have? I mean, that's part of the reason why I got so stressed out with the whole. What do you do? I mean. Well, I mean, I had literally had to buy 15 bags to be able to narrow it down to those two. Mm-hmm. You know, I, like I, I, I bought something thinking I was going to use it for a specific purpose and realized it wasn't quite right, so I, you know, honed it down to the exact right. Absolutely. And I found, you know, choosing the bag is probably the hardest thing in photography, you know, aside from exposure, comp- composition, and uh, <laughs> lighting, and focus, and all that stuff. But, you know, realistically, I'd say you got to split it up, right? you got to try different bags. And like you said, you went through 15 bags before you actually found stuff that fit properly and worked well. And I think that's pretty, that's pretty standard for everybody. What do, you, what do you think, Darren? Yeah, I've, well, I don't have 15 bags, but uh, I've got four or five of them that, that I don't use. I bought uh, a sling pack, sling pack bag, and I hated it because it put too much stress on one shoulder, one shoulder got really sore. Yep. So it uh, it didn't even it out. Uh, I had an old uh, an old low pro camera bag that I really liked, and I think it's yeah it's still low pro that I'm using, and it's a uh, it's one of those I guess suitcases you hang on your shoulder kind of ideas, and uh, can fit a lot of stuff in there. That is a good thing. That's a bad thing because it. It puts my back out. I don't have it uh, here. It's in the in the other part of the house right now. Uh, I can get it if if you want to see it. Um, sure, but yeah, you should get it. Go get okay. it. Be you right go back. get it, and I will start talking in the meantime. Oh, no more thumbs up. Hmm. I like the thumbs up picture that Darren has. Anyway, um. So, yeah, there's so many different types of bags and so on. We, we have a few questions to go over while Darren's grabbing that. First of all, Fernando asks, you know, what kind of tripods we use. Uh, what kind of tripod do you use, Gabriel? Uh, one that's about half a foot too short. <laughs> Pro tip, um, when you're tall, spend the extra bucks and get a tall tripod because I've been paying for it every single time that I use it. And I finally came to the decision that because Trish is several inches shorter than I, She'll get my tripod, and I'm getting a taller one. So I use a um, Manfrotto 190, right? Yeah, Manfrotto 190 that has the little thing where you can turn the head like that and take pictures of flowers, which I paid extra for and have used twice. In the 190X uh, Pro, yeah. <laughs> so I've got a I've got a Manfrotto 055 PROB. See that's, that one actually that would be the one. Yeah, that's the right height. That's the one size bigger, and the 057 oh, would be one size bigger again. That's but it's a boat uh, anchor. Yeah, they're heavy. <laughs> the carbon fiber four leg segment one uh, is awesome. I mean, you're paying about $500 for it, but it's carbon fiber, and it folds down very small because it's four different segments. So you can compress it like nice and small, and it's perfect height for me, for you, and it's about a quarter of the price of the Gitzo, which I use. <laughs> So I'll, I'll I'll be talking about my tripod as soon as I uh, as soon as I get to my segment. But first, Darren has his whole kit here. So take it away, so, Darren. So this this is my camera bag. This is the big thing that I lug onto my shoulders every time I walk around. Uh, I love it because it's got pockets everywhere. Uh, I like to have uh, lots of stuff. You can never have enough things when you're out doing a photo shoot. So on the top is where all my batteries, used batteries, memory cards, different things go. Stick that in here. Open it up. There's some more space for memory cards, um, sensor cleaning brushes, uh, remote controls that I don't use anymore. They're in here. In the bottom part of the bag, I've got my main camera that I use for shooting with my 16 to 35 lens. Mm-hmm. I've got my second camera body that I use for when I'm shooting virtual tours. I've got my other virtual tour lens mount and rotator assembly. This pocket here, I've got all of my Pocket Wizard TTL wireless flash radio transmitters to get my flashes off camera. Uh, carry two flashes, an SB900, SB800 uh, for doing uh, interior photos. I've got usually my 
my 70 to 200, uh, which I took out today, I was doing a training session, uh, so I put in my 20, 24 to 70, which is a boat anchor. I don't normally carry that one in my bag. I usually just take that one separately when I go. And I also put in my 80 to 200, which is another boat anchor. A lot, a lot of weight in the bag today. I've got uh, two or three different remote uh, remote cable releases. I got my 50 mil lens that I always have. I've got my extension tube set, so I can turn any lens into a macro lens, instant macro photography whenever I want. Inside my front pouch, I've got all of my filters. I've got different cords, connectors, gels, uh, tripod mounts, extra tripod mounts different little gadgets and things if you're trying to hook up different flashes and and make them all work in a wireless setup where you're trying to use some pocket wizards you're trying to use an old you know uh, potato masher Mets flash that you know you want to use an optical slave for and you can get everything all set and then you know one plugs into the other and you need a different connector so I got different connectors in here so I really hate it if I ever switch camera bags because usually I'll forget to bring something uh, I've got my uh, my hoodman loop here that I really missed when I was shooting hockey mm -hmm. uh, on Monday because I wanted to do some video and then I really missed the ability to be able to put my eye up to the viewfinder to see what was going on. So when we went to shoot hockey I just went with the uh, camera around my neck and a couple of belt pack bags uh, that I had some pop and chocolate bars in. Uh, normally I'd be keeping a flash and a different lens in there. This time I didn't bring, uh, actually no, I brought my 24-70 to lens. What am I saying? I also carry the camera cables to plug the camera into a TV set and the USB cable to transfer the photos from the camera to a computer in the event that a card reader uh, malfunctions or doesn't work. I, th I think I've also got a card reader in here somewhere uh, or I took it out and I used it in another camera bag. So I've, I've tried the backpack one and I like the ability just to be able to flip the lid open grab what I need out of it when I'm, you know, doing a shoot in the house and just close the lid if I happen to go outside and it's raining. Uh, so the backpack isn't as convenient for that, but I'd like something with wheels, so I still don't have my perfect camera bag. I am still looking. Yeah, I have two, you know, my two or three that I use most of the time, but it's not, it's not my ideal solution. It's not my ideal setup. And, uh, you know, that, that utopian bag is is you know we're we're chasing the perfect sunset in that perfect bag. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. <laughs> so so, and a backpack camera bag. I don't know that that makes a lot of sense for me because I'm usually just taking the camera, and I've got the camera out, so I'm not going to be carrying the camera in the bag unless I'm going you know to or from someplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I'm be carrying you know jacket, chocolate bars, granola bars, water. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of those kinds of things. So, I do have a, a backpack bag. It's the what is it, the Think Tank Trekker or something? The Streetwalker? Uh, it could be the Street. Well, the one that'll hold the 15-inch MacBook Pro in there. Well, I know that the Low Pro Compu Trekker might have that. If that's what you're thinking about, if it's a Low Pro. But if it's a Think Tank, it's probably. No, it's, uh, it's a Think Tank. Okay. See, that's the thing. I think you're going to find that. Everybody finds a brand they like and so on and so forth. Now, I was lucky when I first started Day Tripper, um, <clears throat> the distributor for Low Pro gave us a bunch of bags to use for the day trips. And I tell you, he says, choose a bag you want. And I went and I looked through all the different bag options, and I got this bad boy right here. And I'll talk about that in just a second. And I thank God every day that I asked for this bag and they gave it to me because um, it's the uh, Pro Runner for X450. And it has, and somebody asked in the chat about a roller bag. I think it was my mom, actually. <laughs> yeah. Is there something on wheels that we would recommend? Um, she has to take two bags with her when she goes for a nature shot. Uh, one she'll probably use, and one just in case. Too heavy to carry for any length of time. It's absolutely valid. I mean, when you're carrying all of these things and you're walking out in the heat, especially down in Florida, I mean, that would be ridiculous to carry all this stuff. Now, there's this one bag. Call from Low Pro, and it is a sport bag, and you access everything from the inside. But it's got a little spot on the side of it where you can install one of those one liter bladders from Mountain Equipment Co op or something like that. Just a water bladder. Camel pack. Yeah, it's like a camel pack, but it actually mm -hmm. slides right into the bag and has the straw that would come out from this corner of the bag. 
So when you're doing your hike, you have hydration with you all along. And the material they use is porous. Um, it breathes really, really nicely and is very comfortable. Um, I will try – I think it's called a – I'll figure it out. I'll find out the actual name of it in just a minute. But um, excellent bag. We'll put it in the show notes as well to look at. But is that everything you have there, Darren? Is, is everything the I have? Anymore? Well, not everything you have, but everything you have to use on a daily – uh, well, apart from the, the pouches on the two sides have uh, AA batteries, uh, the cords mm -hmm. for the camera, the card reader, extra batteries, spare batteries uh, for the different bodies. What else do I have? I think about photography is that everything's so cheap. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> you uh, buy a camera and $600,000 worth of other stuff and you're set. <laughs> it's true. How many times do customers come into the store and they need to buy a camera and they want to spend five hundred dollars? They end up spending two or three times that just because when it's all said and done, you got your memory cards and your bags mm -hmm. and your filters and spare batteries, spare batteries and warranties and things like that. Oh, by the way, people who are watching our show, um, there are some places that you'll buy a camera where warranty is a bad thing. Well, not even a bad thing, but just like a an overly expensive for the value thing. I am one of those guys that believe in warranty because I've had Mr. Snaps replaced under Henry's extended warranty, and if I didn't have that, I would have been without a camera until I just picked up the 7100. So it's really important that if you're spending a certain amount of money, and buy an Nikon. It. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Trust I'm me. If, G, no. <laughs> yeah, right. If you knew how many Canon ca cameras came back for warranty claims, then, you know, it's funny. When you're sitting on behind the other side of the counter and you have all these people coming in day and, day and night, I mean, even Panasonic cameras come back for repair, and they're still made in Japan and about the best quality you're going to get in a point shoot at least. So you can have problems with anything. Mm -hmm. When I picked up my camera, I had a choice of buying it straight from Nikon, and unfortunately I wouldn't be able to put the Henry's warranty on it. So... And then there was the whole, I went to Nikon training, and I, I won $50 off my next Nikon purchase. And So, A, my cost would have been cheaper. I would have saved another $50 on that. And I still bought it through Henry's because I wanted to put our warranty on it. It was that important to me. So um, just something to think about when you're getting into your camera gear and all that kind of stuff. I mean, lenses, eh, maybe not. Um, flashes, I mean, depends on how much you spend on your gear. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. My impression is you buy an SLR, that's an investment for a number of years, protect it, right? Anyway, that's a little side note. Um, I, saw, I saw a camera bag the other day, I think it was in Mississauga, you guys didn't have it in uh, Newmarket, and it had a, had a backpack that you could wear it as a backpack, you could carry it like a suitcase, and it also had wheels with a um, pull-out handle. Hmm. The only thing missing for me was turning the, it was a vertical bag, the only thing that was missing for me was turning the bag sideways and then putting a strap on it like I have on my bag now. Mm. And it probably wasn't that big either, eh? And it was about the same size as my bag, a fairly, fairly big one. Hmm. Cool. So that way I could carry it over my shoulder most of the time. If I had to do a long walk somewhere and you put it on the wheels and you roll it out. And then if I want to take it, you know, hiking on a day trip, then I can just wear it like a backpack. Well, you're going to love the bag I'm about to show you because it's exactly what this bag does. But you're right. We don't usually carry it in your market because it's a little bit on the pricier side. It sells for about 380 bucks. And again, I was blessed to get that through um, a very fine fella. And anyway, um, why That's don't I get your window? Th That's near the window, isn't it? And you normally leave your window open, don't you? Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Hang on, I'll be right back. I'll be I right back. I store it right beside the window so everybody can come and have a, a mouth. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you're getting me all scared. <laughs> Leave me alone, people. Um, no, anyway, um, why don't I kind of go into some of the stuff that I carry along with me? See, it's a lot different for me than you guys because I run photo day trips. You guys come on my day trips, so I shouldn't say it's a lot different, but when I'm trying to be the guy that has something for everybody on a day trip, I have to make sure I have it in my kit when I'm using it. So if I'm going to, let's just say, um, Algonquin Park on a day trip, well, now I'm carrying everything. I'm carrying now both of my cameras, um, the D700 and the D7100, uh, all the Sigma lenses. In fact, that's why I originally got that low pro bag that you have, Gabriel, the, the Slingshot 300, mm -hmm. because I was able to put the 150 to 500 lens and a whole bunch of different lenses in there, sling it over my back, and off I go. Turns out, 
it was too heavy, and it was very awkward on my uh, my body. So I ended up uh, getting rid of that. So anyway, I'm going with all these things, fisheye lenses. Um, I pretty much carry all of the Nikon lenses on me on the on the day trip, so I have to have a place where, I don't know, 15 lenses or so. Um, and, of course, I always bring my 14 to 20, well, not mine yet, the 14 to 24, that's my next big purchase, Nikon. Um, that lens is absolutely insane. I love it, and uh, I would marry it if I could, but I'm already married to somebody better, so I'll, I'll just stick to what I got. Anyway, and, of course... A hat. Always have to wear a hat when I'm out because I get burned and it's uncomfortable. So always have the hat and the rock. The rock, uh, my tripod, is the Gitzo, the GT3830. That's a basalt tripod. It's actually made from rock, volcanic rock. Uh, I like that because it's not as heavy as an aluminum tripod. It doesn't corrode. You don't have to worry about any kind of salt water or mud or anything ruining the material. Um, and it's, it's the most solid tripod I've ever used. It comes totally to my height. And Gabe, that's, you know, it's a little bit excessive, but like I can crank this thing up where my camera is literally here before I put the head, before I put my camera, like mm -hmm. the, the base, then the head, and then my camera. So right. I have to look up to it if I wanted to. And it's just as just as sturdy when it's at its maximum height as when it's at a normal height. That's great. Yeah, yeah I'd it's... rather it be a foot too tall than a foot too short, which is what I'm going through right now. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, especially if you can go over tall, and that way you don't have to put it to its full height. You can get it a little mm -hmm. bit more under control. I could lean right on this tripod, and it doesn't move. It doesn't budge. Um, Remember, people, if you buy a good tripod, like I bought this tripod... Eight years ago, I think. Eight years ago. And I figured I'll just live with it. It's a little bit shorter than what I want, but I'll just live with it. I've had it for eight years. I mean, and, and I swear it looks like the day I bought it. And I use it. I mean, I use it for a fair amount of stuff. So you buy a good tripod. We, so I dropped a couple hundred bucks on it. Buy a good tripod, and it will last you a long, 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 long time. So mm -hmm. just buy a good one out the door, by the one that you need out the door, and, and you'll be happy and not have a sore neck for eight years. It's true. You know, every cheap tripod you ever buy only adds to the cost of the last one, so it's definitely something to consider. All right, so why don't we talk about the big beefcake I have here behind me. This is, as I said, the Low Pro um, Pro Runner X450, and as you can see on the front here, it even has a little tripod boot. So if I want, I can take the rock, I can put the feet in here, strap it up across the top, and it has these little, this little strap on the top here that just comes out, and you just unclip it, wrap around the top of the tripod, and it supports it across the entire top. So that's pretty handy. Inside here is where I would carry my laptop, and you can see the interior, as Gabriel said, is that same kind of gray color. Um, I've always said that you can tell a camera bag company from a bag company by the color of their interior. Um, Cata bags that we sell at the store, K-A-T-A, -A, they're all yellow inside. Um, their strategy for making it yellow is that it's easier to see your camera gear in the bag. You're making no sense. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever had any problem finding your camera gear inside your gray bag. but I, I intentionally, when I go to like night shooting and stuff, I'll intentionally think to myself, okay, now I have to find my neutral density filter or something. Like, I do time trials finding gear with my eyes closed because when you're in that situation where you need the shot, you know, you don't want to be trying to find, you should know where things are in your bag mm -hmm. with your eyes closed. Absolutely true. Now, unfortunately, I changed my, my bag around so much inside that, uh, you know, from, from shoot to shoot, depending on what I bring, I'll reconfigure the interior. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes you have to do that too. But ultimately, yeah, it's nice to know where you put your stuff and have a, a certain, I don't want to call it a ritual, but a certain way of doing things. Um, okay, I'll put that back here for a second because the next cool part of this bag, can you still see that okay? Mm -hmm. Is this. It's got a little handle up there and wheels on the bottom. Super awesome wheels that I've actually used a lot. Concrete, you name it, dirt, works really well. Does that pop-up handle have the tripod mount on the top? No. 
Okay. This is the one model that doesn't, and it's okay. a good point because sometimes if you mount a tripod to the top of here, you can mount a flash to the top of your bag. Mm -hmm. You can mount all kinds of things to the top of your bag, and that becomes really an additional benefit. This guy doesn't have that, and that's okay. you know, yeah, no, that that would have been pretty cool, but that's the only thing I can say negative about this bag. So there's the handle, and it just pushes back in in place. But if I'm on a day trip, I don't want to be rolling this thing along through Algonquin Park, you know, and we've got roots and logs and all kinds of stuff to go over, and it would just be uncomfortable bouncing all over the place. So, so he makes Darren do it. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't go too far. <laughs> Darren would be like, beep, 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 here you go. Don't laugh. If I was on the Toronto Island one time, somebody had a camera bag they put down for a couple of minutes and weren't paying attention, and I put my 80 to 200 boat anchor in there, and they carried it all the way across the Toronto <laughs> Island for me. <laughs> okay, note to our day tripper photo customers, <laughs> don't leave your camera bag near Darren, it might get un unnecessarily heavy all of a sudden. <laughs> um, this is what I like. Tear this little flap down, and it's backpack. Mm -hmm. So these straps will fit in there, you can put over one shoulder, two shoulders, they've got the sliding chest support up here. Um, Super handy, and they've even got these little braces here, so I could take an extra lens bag and mount it right to the front of that. As I'm walking, I'd have lens pouches right here that I can, you know, grab whatever I need out of and go from there. And when you're done, you just fold them up, slide it back inside, super fast, super easy, and it seals it right back up inside there. And of course, as I'm saying, super fast, and super easy. It's not. <laughs> It is. Thing, if that model had the tripod mounted on the top, you could be walking down the path with the camera attached up here, controlling it from your phone, just taking pictures as you go. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to do that. Uh, we've got a phone call coming in now from the basement. Uh, okay, let's just end that. Thanks, Mims, for calling and here you go. She doesn't know. <laughs> okay. The joys of live TV. I know, eh? <laughs> I also like the fact that you have the little card holder right here so that if I ever do, do lose this bag or if Darren steals it, I can get it back, maybe. Got a handle right there, and there's a handle on the side, so I can even carry it like that if I need to. So mm. it's a pretty flexible bag. And you know what? It actually holds some camera gear, so why don't I... Open it up and start talking about that. Again, 18% gray, kind of, inside. And in this bag, you can carry, I don't know, a stepchild, other things. Usually, I've got my 7300 VR. This is my favorite telephoto lens that I use on the daily. It's pretty quick as far as focusing goes, and it's great at zoos because when you are focusing and the lens is right on glass, it won't push it in and out as you're zooming or as you're focusing. So it's a really good lens for that. Um, 300 millimeter. I'm, I tried it actually two days ago, yesterday or something. Yeah, yesterday. I actually went down to St. John's Side Road there and took some shots with the Schwartz. They turned out pretty good, very sharp. I've also got in here Mr. Snaps. I know you guys love my names. Uh, there I am using the Schwartz again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Darren has too much time on his hands. <laughs> so, Mr. Snaps, and on my camera here, uh, I always leave the base of my tripod on there. As you can see, it's pretty long. So if I do need to set this on the ground for a low perspective shot, it really does balance the camera quite well. You don't have to worry about it tipping forward, lens dragging it or anything like that. So, really nice wide base, and it just clamps up here nice and quickly. Bada boom, bada bing, and it's in there. Tighten that up. Oh. So, that's another way I love this kind of a rig. Everything works really fast and very quickly. Ah, my new baby. I've got the brand new Nikon SB900 flash. Ooh. I'm going to use these uh, on all the day trips pretty much. We're going to definitely use this at the Meteor shoot. Um, inside these bags, and I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a, a fan of little gadget bags. I don't know about you guys, but I like mm -hmm. little gadget bags. So it's got all the little spots in here for 
they finally made a decent style bag because previous to that it was a long thin bag. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you buy a bottle of wine at the liquor store, a long thin mm -hmm. bag like that. That was ridiculous because if you put anything in it and wanted to put the flash in, if you wanted to get something out, you have to go all, take the flash out, take this out, take that out to get the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Now they did put a little zipper pouch in the bottom, which was just as silly. So they finally you know, came up with a good design when they came up with the 910. I love unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, my 900 didn't come with one of those. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, you came in and uh, picked up the extra little gels from the 910 for your for your flash, didn't you, Darren? I did so. It's right here. It's one of my daily daily use things. Where did it go? Oh, I don't know. I got them right here. I haven't opened them yet because I haven't used this flash yet at this point. I'm still uh, anxiously awaiting that time. They've got the little microchip thing that Darren could probably explain a lot better than I can right in here. And, uh, yeah, these are excellent little filters and gels that you could use to help color balance and so on. Just a quick question, guys. Does my camera look like it's moving well to you? Like it's which? It's, it's keeping up and moving normally. Yeah. Okay, because it's yeah, what, what it's showing us looks kind of weird, but I mean that's yeah. normal. That's a given, right? As good as always. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, also, as Darren said, having a lot of extra batteries, uh, rechargeable batteries when you're using a flash is a great idea. Uh, the Sanyo Analoops are recognized as some of the best rechargeable batteries for recycle time and holding their charge and all that kind of stuff. So excellent little things to have. I made sure that when I bought my kit, I picked up two extra backup sets and the charger with its own set so never have one, too many batteries one note if you are getting two sets of the rechargeable batteries is um, I put a blue stripe on here so that this set of batteries these are Panasonic's actually they're not too bad <laughs> sets of these and how could I identify which ones were the charged ones and which ones were the ones from the you know flash that were dead you know, sometimes they come out of the, um, the flash, everything all spills into one jumble, and you don't know what is what. Mm -hmm. So put a, get a felt, permanent felt marker, put a mark on them, and that way I know that these four batteries, you know, they all have the blue mark on them. And if anything ever happens, they get mixed up. At least I can identify, you know, which ones are which. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, you see, these are all good points. Even when you have your actual camera batteries, it's a good idea to put some sort of indicator on them that you, you know, this is number one. One, number two, that way if one starts to die quicker, you can always identify them better. The, um, the cannons come with, just give me one second here, I got two little tips for batteries. So the cannons have little covers on the back. You'll see this is the cannon cover and it's got some cutouts on it, one in particular. So if a camera, if a battery is charged, have the blue showing, oh, okay. and if the camera isn't charged, did I just do a complete? No, have yeah, the, the, blue have showing the gray the showing. Hmm. Okay. You see the gray showing there. And then my other tip, and I picked this up from Henry's, from Brian. Uh, where is it? Underneath my remote here. So I picked up this. This is for managing all my double A batteries mm. and so I just put them in here and once I've uh, used a set of rechargeables I just put them back in upside down and so anything that's upside down I know it's been shot and anything that's right side up it's good to go. Awesome tips very good. Um, one thing that I'm really excited about as well is as you're gonna see in a second my new camera has the grip on the bottom and they come with these little accessories where you can use AA batteries in your grip. So now if my camera battery dies in the middle of nowhere and I have all these extra batteries, I can pop them into this adapter, pop that inside my grip, and I can keep on shooting. Or just run to the corner store and buy some Duracells. Either way, it would really help. Um, up in top here, there's all these little pockets in that. And I try and keep as little in there as possible because when I have my computer in the top and I have all kinds of extra batteries and chachis and gizmos and gadgets up in the lid, it does get very top heavy and it can flap around and damage the computer when it's in there. So I try and keep a minimum of things in top pockets. 
But what I will always have with me is my remote control. Um, anytime I'm doing a long exposure, anytime I'm doing anything where I want absolute sharpness and my camera to be perfectly still, got to have a remote control. Uh, of course, I picked a new remote control up with my new camera. So we got this guy, we got its little baby brother. And I'll keep them in the long slot right up in here. Yeah, I said that. The next pocket is where I keep my maps. On day trips, you can never have enough maps. Just get yourself out of a snag. Um, any information that I have, directions on a cool spot. There's uh, directions to this special hidden location of a really good place to shoot birds and things like that. But if I told you, I'd have to kill you. So um, that's going to stay right here. Uh, <laughs> and I got, so, yeah. I got, I got maps on my BlackBerry. That actually works. <laughs> we found something that BlackBerry is good at. Awesome. <laughs> Extra things I always try and keep on me. And this is mostly because on day trips, um, you know, you get a lot of lenses going from bag to bag and so on. So I always tend to keep an extra body cap or two. Um, also, back cap for my lenses. It's a good idea to have extra stuff like that. And that's what's in there. So that's my home base. And usually if I'm doing a long trip or I have a lot of uh, extra lenses, this stays on my back. Or at Muskoka Wildlife Center, they're actually nice enough to carry it along on a four-wheeler for us where we need to go. And I can have every Nikon lens that we borrow in this bag. There's a separate little pocket for everything. Now, this is my Go Bag. And my Go Bag is a bag that I split it up into three main categories. I have my keep everything on me, my Go Bag, and my home base. And then usually a fourth would be extra gadgets that I need for a specific day trip, which I have right back here, and I'll show you that in one second. But my Go Bag is the Think Tank Retrospective 30 which I absolutely love. In the back zippered area here, I usually have my instruction manuals. Look how big this manual is, guys. This so is in 83 different languages. This thing's freaking huge. <laughs> i got to carry this thing around in my bag if I ever have a question. You know what? I've got a better idea. But that'll be released shortly because this is something that's a top Nikon's secret. Nikon's got a built-in help menu system on all of their cameras. Just push the help button on the menu item you're in and you're good to go. Sometimes... I need more help than that, apparently. <laughs> what I do is I just um, I download all of the, if you go on the website, they have PDF versions of all their manuals, and I just download them to my smartphone, load them up on Google Drive, and then I, have, I can access them anywhere that I am anytime that I need, need to figure something out. And, of course, there's always a new option that's going to be coming out that we'll have to worry about uh, making things even bit. easier for people, yeah. potentially. Um, anyway. Gabriel, when you were opening up your camera bag, you had that Velcro stuff happening. Yes. Now, does that ever... Do you have a, a silent mode on that? This one doesn't have a silent mode, but I have uh, lens cases for when I shoot weddings that have a silent mode, yes. My, my, some of my cases do have silencers. I mean, that is something that some people need to be aware of when your silencers mm -hmm. are important. Um, as you notice, when I open and close this Think Tank bag, there's no Velcro sound. They have the little quiet mode. Can you see this okay? Yep. Cool. If I peel this down and fold that there, now it'll Velcro. So this is just one of those bags that they thought that if you're in a church or in a museum or any place where you don't want to make a lot of noise or draw attention, a drama club performance for your kids, anything like that, um, you can just fold those up and you don't have to worry about that. Nothing's more discreet than... Just rip it off quick. <laughs> Hit the paint over with. <laughs> exactly. So you have that, and they have these little pockets in the front too, and the pockets are all Velcroed in, but, but there's another piece of Velcro inside. So if I don't want to make noise in the pockets, I can put that flap down in here and don't have to worry about that either. Um, one thing to always carry with you, business cards, some sort of contact information. I've been in the middle of Algonquin Park with my group of uh, day trippers, and, you know, people just walk up and say, hey, what is this, some sort of camera club? And I'm like, well, here you go. This is what we're doing. So it never hurts to have one of those on you. And, of course, memory cards. We've talked about these all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this in workflow, so I'm not going to get too far into it. But, uh, you know, it's always a good idea to have your memory cards organized in a special way that you know and keep them on you. This is the Think Tank uh, Pixel Pocket Rocket. I just like saying that. So there hey, you we go. all use those. 
I don't see anybody who wouldn't awesome. use them. They are. They're yeah. just awesome. I just picked mine up today, but it's not as big as yours. Yeah, I've got one of those too. Um, that's in my drawer, but I usually keep the old sensors and old memory cards that, uh, you know, I don't use anymore in that one. It's a peewee. It's a, that's right. It's Pixel Pocket Pee Wee or something. Now, one thing I love about Think Tank is they give you these um, rain covers with everything. And the reason I think that's cool is because they're detachable. Um, Lopro has the rain cover in there as well, but it's always attached. It's always inside, and it makes the lid fairly bulky. What Think Tank does is they give you the rain cover with this little Velcro edge piece and little loops everywhere. So I can just put this in here, Velcro right to it, and I can keep that with my bag at all times. Or if I don't want to bring it with me, if I know I'm going to be on a sunny day, I'll just take it right out and leave it somewhere else and don't need it anymore. I've got a whole closet full of them. They're pretty cool. So, now we get to the nitty-gritty. Ladies and gentlemen, the Schwartz be with you. This is my new baby, the Nikon D7100 with the grip I was telling you about. Um, it's lighter than any camera I've used as far as an SLR goes. And as you can see, I've got my own Think Tank strap on there. Um, the last thing I want to do is walk around with the original, hey, look what I got. Yay! Um, actually, <laughs> just right. Rob me. Exactly. Please, <laughs> steal this camera. Yeah, um, it's like when I pick up my 5D Mark III. Yeah, I'll, I'll be using the, the camera, that it, the strap that it comes with for about 12 seconds and going to a rapid strap. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And actually, both of you guys use the Black Rapid, and I got a chance to use Darren's at Hockey the other day, and it really did feel great. That was the Black Rapid uh, Cargo that Darren uses. Sorry, my light time's out on me there. There you go. Just you've got the cargo as well. Yep. Yeah. So this one's it's an over the shoulder system. So it'll just sit on this shoulder here, and it goes around there. And oh, you've got the double shooter. Nope. Nope. That's the same as yours. And so it's got a cool little uh, magnet pocket here. <laughs> so that magnet yeah, attacks except, me. Except that every time you lean against anything metal, it's like you. Ah! It's a <laughs> strong magnet. Yeah. Then it another is. magnet here, and it's got a couple different compartments here, so I keep like different spare cards or business cards or things like that in there. It's a great little system. No, they're awesome. Yeah, um, I highly recommend them. Navi says Think Tank rocks. I agree. It does Navi rock. rocks. There you go. Just Navi rocks too. One thing, if you are using the Black Rapid strap, I had this happen one time. I was putting the camera down, and I didn't just let it go. And the strap just came off. This thing unscrewed. I wasn't paying oh. attention to it. I'm so, OCD about that. Yeah, I always double check just to make yeah. sure it's on tight. I've also heard that the uh, blue Loctite, if you put a little bit of that on the screw, it won't come out. So that might be a little tip for Black Rapid Strap users. Just a little bit I'm of always blue. taking it off and on and putting it on different cameras. Or... Fair enough. Yeah, it has to work with your workflow, right? Now, the reason I like the little Think Tank strap is because it's much thinner. It's very soft. It's got a little grippy on both sides. Mm -hmm. And I can literally just put that on the very edge of my shoulder, and it's not going anywhere. Like, I can move around and do whatever I want to do. I'm dancing with the stars. Anyway, I'm never going to do that again. Uh, <laughs> so I never put it around my mama gave you, and it she's watching, so she yeah. knows. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Didn't mean to embarrass you. And I should apologize to my mother-in-law, too. That phone ringing, it's not her fault. She didn't know the phone was in here. It's my bad. Anyway, um, just thought I'd say that. Sorry, Mims. Um, this guy here is awesome. I never wear a camera like this. Do you guys ever wear your camera around your neck? No. You know how much not that for hurts me? the last couple of years. <laughs> it really, it actually bothers me when I see people with their cameras around their neck. I don't know why. Again, I feel a little stabby, but it's okay. I'll get over it. I'm very controlled. Well, it's just, it's, it, it, it. You know, puts one of the most usually the the lens for me the lens is more expensive than the body, and it puts the lens in the most vulnerable position, mm -hmm. and it pulls on your neck and it screams tourist and so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with you. I agree. Um, I, these are lightweight; they're very thin. Most of the time when I'm using this, I will literally just take it, wrap it around my wrist a couple mm -hmm. of times, and. It makes for an excellent hand strap. The camera is very secure. I don't have to worry about losing it or dropping it or anything. It's always right there. Um, 
works horizontal, vertical, no problem. And I love it. Makes me very happy. Now, what I also like is I got this really great little Wi-Fi thing I showed you guys in that picture earlier. And when you buy it, it actually comes with this little holder. So you open that up, and there is the Wi-Fi piece. The dongle, you can say. It's, we love dongles. So, yeah, that just stays right on the strap, and I don't have to worry about it. There's also another little piece. Now, this is one thing that kind of irked me when I bought this camera. The D700, if I'm doing a long exposure, I can flip a little switch right here, and it closes the eyepiece eye so that no light will get through. With the 7100, you have to take off this old eyepiece and slide a new little cap over the top of that. So I've got to carry that around with me all the time. Mm. I think I might have already lost it. Um, I had it on the side of the strap, and it's not there now. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish my camera bag was yellow. I'd be able to find it. Let's <laughs> let's see the top of the hot shoe on that. Yeah, that's still there. Oh, you still have. Oh, come on. Yeah, Take that thing it. off. Take that thing off. Put it in the box and put it away with all the packaging that you may <laughs> use if you ever sell it. I. You know what? I will, Darren. Thank you. I will. I. I you know, come to think of it, I still. I, I think I still have it on Mr. Snaps too. Anyway. You know, it's like when it's like when people buy you know these cameras. And there's a piece of shipping plastic that's on top of the plastic protector that's on top to protect the screen, and they leave that plastic on. Yeah, that was the first thing to go. Uh, what else do I have? I always carry an extra insert with me. A little insert, because there's my gray card. If I'm taking a shot and I want to do my white balance afterward, I just hold this at arm's length, capture that in the light that I'm shooting in, and I use that image as a reference after the fact in Lightroom to correctly adjust my white balance. And these other front pockets are so big, I could fit my Gary Fong in there. I could fit a second body in the front pocket. And I don't mean a human body. I mean the camera body. Um, <laughs> I could probably I fit a small human enough. Yeah, well, I don't even want to joke about figured that one out. I, I just don't want to joke about that right now because my uncle in Panama situation. But, oh. uh, yeah, that wasn't too pretty. Poor Uncle Ed. Anyway, guys, don't go to Panama and do real estate deals. It's never fun. Also, Yikes. I know, downer, eh? Sorry, Shit guys. It just got real. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, this is going to sound kind of silly, but never a bad idea to have a little bit of mouthwash, hmm. chapstick, uh, little things like this. Blake asked us, what extra stuff do we carry? And it kind of leads into that. Um, I always carry a little chapstick. I always carry mouthwash, uh, hand cream. Little bars. Granola bars, hand cream. I have psoriasis, so my hands do get quite dry. And that's super painful in, in the middle of a day trip. So um, i got to say, this Adelphi stuff, this stuff's really working well. It's a natural skin care. It's from a local um, person. You can get it at the new market, uh, what do you call it, the market, the farmer's market, when she has her little booth there. It's just shea butter cream and evening primrose. So really good stuff for your hands. How many people had a flashlight in their camera stuff? I've got a headlight. I have no idea what you mean. No idea. Actually, that's the next thing I was going to talk about. Having flashlights with you at all times is a super handy thing. If for nothing else, when you're shooting at night, you can look inside your camera bag and find your stuff if, you, if it's not yellow. <laughs> I, I, one of these Pelican flashlights, this is the second one I had. Uh, Navi's watching, so I won't say what happened to the first one. Um, but I do believe it's somewhere still in the sundial in rubble somewhere. Thank you, Navi. Uh, <laughs> these things are fantastic. Um, they're waterproof. You can chuck them across the room to somebody if they need it, and it's yellow, and you can see that really easily. Are you Velcroing over there again? No, I'm zipping. All right, cool. Um, so, yeah, always have a flashlight with you, which leads me to my next bag. When we go to the meteor shoot, this is something that everybody will see me get out. Old school, baby. In here are the Brinkmans. Um, I can't say enough about these flashlights. It makes me feel special just the fact that I own them. These things are absolutely insane. This is the Brinkman Marine. They used to be called the Q-Beam originally. They've turned into the, um, what do you call them, the Maximilian. They're still calling this one the Q-Beam. And you can see that if anybody is interested in getting some of these suckers. They will literally blind a newt. They're so bright. Um, yeah. 
Yes, yeah. Gabriel's blinded. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> you newt. Um, so I keep these little uh, socks on there just so that, you know, when they're in my bag, they don't get all scratched up and everything. The reason, these are the socks that I use when I sprain my ankle. Uh, yeah, big enough to go around a Brinkman. So I have two of these guys. I have the Maximilian 2, and I have the Q-Beam, and they're so bright they shine right through the sock. They're ridiculous. Also, really important to have, especially on a night photography shoot, the white towel. Uh, everybody thinks it's because you're going to get wet or whatever, but no, ladies and gentlemen. The white towel is important because when you're shooting at night, you put this on the ground, everything you put on top of it becomes extremely visible, and you're able to find all of your stuff and pack it all up nice and neat so you bring it all home with you at the end of the day. So very important to have one of these guys with you. Now, because these flashlights are so ridiculously big, they require a ridiculously large battery as well. So I have to carry an extra battery with me. So these pockets really work nicely to hold the batteries. And then the chargers and the car chargers and everything that comes with them. So this one bag is literally just for a couple flashlights that I always like to bring with me. And I do want to um, sidetrack for half a minute. Al mentioned earlier, um, he's one of our viewers, that he lives in Boston. So we weren't going to get too much into this in our conversation, but seeing as Al is in Boston, we just want to say, you know, we wish everybody in Boston well from the latest events that happened there. I don't know what events they literally were. We know that there were a couple explosions. Uh, a few people died and there was lots of injuries. So, you know, we always have to have empathy. Um, but I think we should reserve judgment on what happened until we really know. You know what bothers me? How come people have to have closure on these things? You know what I mean? Like, they have to give you who did it and why. There can never be a random act of craziness. It has to be who did it and why so that the humankind feels more appeased and happy again. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's a it's different a world we live in. It is a human condition, but it's a different world we live in now, and, you know, there's going to be a lot of crazy stuff. Anyway, Al, we hope everybody's well that you are with there, and... Uh, we really, really hope every, everybody's okay. So that's all I want to get into there. I'm just going to touch, uh, go go back one topic on the lighting. Um, I was trying to find my headlight um, that I use that I absolutely love, and I couldn't find it. But this is, a, if you go to Canadian Tire, um, Energizer, this is from Energizer. It's a fantastic headlight system. And um, so you can see it's got a three double-A battery pack in the back here. Um, and this um, front buffer can come down, so it's an incredibly powerful light that you can use. And the other thing that it has on it, so it's got two stages of primary light. It's got a green and a red light as well. And I've said this before, the red light is awesome for night shooting because red is the only color that when you illuminate something in that color you don't lose your night vision. Your retinas don't have to adjust to a red light um, so when you turn it off you still have this, the same amount of night vision as you did before you turned it on. Mm -hmm. So um, any any headlight that I get I make sure it has a red light on it as well. And so if you're looking for camera settings or just trying to find your way down a hill, turn on the red light. It's it's incredibly bright. Um, you can really see where you're going, but you don't lose your night vision. Mm -hmm. Excellent tip. And I learned that from you too, actually. I actually um, found out that's why pirates wore patches. Because they could have they, they always had one eye that was adjusted to night vision. And so if they needed to, they could cover this eye and lift up this one, and they were automatically could see better in the dark. Or not, maybe not all pirates, but that's why a fair amount of pirates wore eye patches. The things you learn on our show. Yeah. That's actually really cool. I always thought it was because they had their eye poked out, but what do I know? <laughs> um, another thing that uh, is good to have is a non-broken modeling light for your lighting system. <laughs> Sidetrack again, I know, but I was setting the lights up. I wanted to put another one over here so you could see the gear better, and of course, I broke one, so I have to replace that. Anyway, yeah. So other little fun little toys. Make sure you have your flashlights. Make sure you have your white 
towel, which is very important. Uh, make sure you have your card reader. Um, yeah, I'll just show that one more time. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, you missed that, didn't you? Hmm? Yeah, I, I know. I know. I know. I gotta rub it in. I gotta <laughs> rub it in. Now, I know this is gonna sound a little silly, but I always have this guy with me at all times. This is mini snaps. This is my little point and shoot that I always have with me, and you notice I strap it before I shoot it. I always make sure I put the strap on before you start using these things. Now, two reasons why I keep this with me. One, because it's a really good point and shoot. This is the, um, the DSC HX5. They don't make this guy anymore, and it's really too bad. It's a decent zoom. You've got a, about a 10 times optical zoom, but it's only a, t a 10 megapixel, so it's a very low pixel count, great for low light. I got a shot of, at 1.30 in the morning of um, a little critter out in the backyard, and it's actually a usable photo, a possum. That's what it was. Uh, but oh. second... Yeah, they're creepy. We saw another one last right. night, actually. The only, thing, the only thing I will actually try to swerve to hit. <laughs> no, they're, they're mean, nasty little things, and they're not native to this area. They're, they're being brought in with, with, like, vegetation and stuff, and they're just, yeah. Yeah, it was in our backyard a couple of years ago. Last night we saw one. Um, last year sometime yeah. I kind of spliced one in half with the tires in the car, but that's a whole different time. Um, <laughs> apparently people aren't going to be too upset about that. Weird. <laughs> second reason I carry this with me at all times is because I wrap it in my big chamois. These things are awesome to keep on you. Um, Gabriel, you have the lens pen, and I've got my lens pen right here as well. The lens pen is one of those things that everybody should always own. you got a brush on one side so you can get all the nitty gritties off, and you've got a little um, carbon dust coated tip on the other side where you can put it right on the lens and give it a good wipe. Uh, don't wash that black stuff off, everybody, because it's important. I had one person come in and said, there was too much black stuff, so I washed it off, and, and then I kept on using it, and everything started to streak, and I was like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. of course. That's carbon dust. The carbon will actually absorb oils and absorb fingerprints. So when you're using that, it will really, really help, and there's usually a reserve of that carbon dust in the cap. This one I've had for so long that that dust is long gone, but it still actually works well, and I will still use it. But this is a completely different purpose. If you have a large lens cleaning the LCD screen on the back of your camera, these things are absolutely fantastic for keeping things clean, which is why I usually keep my camera wrapped in it. And if you look, this thing's about three and a half years old, and it is mint without a scratch, a nick, a fingerprint even, because this cloth is always over top of it. So not a bad idea to have one of those things handy as well. Um, what else? The other oh. thing you can keep in the rapid strap. In the built-in pockets, I always have a little, little chamois in the built-in pockets on the rapid strap. One last thing, uh, two last things actually. One is kind of kind of what you carry, Gabriel. You know, you had that four-way splitter for power socket. Mm -hmm. I don't have it on me right now. It's just in the closet behind me. But I usually, on a day trip, carry an extension cord with a voltage converter or a voltage inverter, I should say. You plug it in the cigarette lighter of your car. And it goes to a power cord where I can put mm. it to the back of the van. And if anybody has a dead battery and they have their charger with them, which you said, carry your charger with you. Excellent tip. Um, you can charge it up in the vehicle during the day trip. So no more dead batteries and things like that. Al mentions gaffer's tape. Excellent thing to have. Not duct tape. Duct tape leaves residue. Gaffer's tape is a residue-less tape you can use. And if you get different colored tape, uh, you can actually um, – actually, Dr. Ross gave me the tip of putting – electrical tape around the top of my flash a certain color, so I'll always know that those are my flashes, and I, I will be doing that soon. Um, gaffer's tape use, is also used. Use gaffer's tape, because if you use electrical tape, it does leave a sticky residue, and it can get soft and come off, and then start getting goo on everything. That's kind of what I was thinking too, but you know what? The doctor made a suggestion, so I'm all good with either way. Um, I, could, I will be picking up some gaffer's tape, definitely for other things, labeling my stands and my tripod and other things like that too. And as you say, no residue, so excellent thing to have is gaffer's tape. Thank you for that tip, Al. We, have, we get a, uh, a yellow and a black, so the black is for when we need to blend into, into things and the yellow is for when we want it to be really noticeable. So like on a day trip when you're you know, teaching it, when we did a, the night photography, no, not the night, the bring on the night session when we have everybody with all their flashes it's a good idea to have something that stands out from everybody else's, right? Yeah. Or, I've, got, or like, I've got Velcro on mine because I'm always Velcroing on uh, diffusers on the back. Mm -hmm. 
And these are other things too, actually. Um, I didn't mention that, but in my home base bag here, I usually carry the Hano system. And there we go. So Hano has these things called the speed strap. And the speed strap is how they connect everything to their gear. So if you have a flash, I'm just going to pull out the SB900 here. That's the 910. 910, sorry. Um, this speed strap here just Velcros over the top edge. Thanks for the correction there, Darren. <laughs> and there we go. So that's on there. And it's got a rubber on the inside, so it's not just going to slide right off. Now, I can pull out these little gels of any color I would like. And what I have here is just a heavy frost. <laughs> and Darren's getting his gels out too, by the sounds of it. And that'll just Velcro right over the top of that. And now I've got this instant... You know, instant wireless technology has gotten really great. Brian, put your flash down. Put your flash down. Bing! Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> You've mimicked me. <laughs> Jeez, we're almost twins. That's so crazy. <laughs> These things are great. A little speed strap, your flash, or, as Darren has, you know, the Velcro mounted right to it. It uh, Seizure. Uh, not really. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> we were worried. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> Red. <laughs> yeah, it's not really showing. I mean, you don't see the white flash, but yeah, putting a colored gel on there. Okay, that's yeah, red. Blood red. That's how we were at the um, Screaming Heads. We were lighting up statues from 20 feet away using Pocket Wizards and Flash with gels. So, excellent little things to carry with you. And you can reuse these things over and over again, all different colors, all different shapes and sizes. So carrying little gels with you is always a good idea. Um, oh, last thing I wanted to talk about. This little guy. One of the handiest little gizmos I've ever picked up. They're about $30. They're not really expensive. And what it is is a solar iPhone charger. Hmm. So if I'm out in the middle on a day trip and I've got two bars left on my phone, I have a full charge on this, and you press the button, and it lights up, and you can see I've got four little bars on there. And this will fully charge my phone from dead. So it's a really handy Just thing to have. Just plug a USB cable into it? It works two ways. Either you can plug it in to your computer to charge, which charges mm -hmm. in about four hours. So there's the cord for that, and it plugs into the USB. Okay. Or... If you're stuck on a desert island somewhere and there's lots of sun, it'll charge in four days by the sun. So No, but I was just saying, like, can you plug... You said it's an iPhone charger, but can you, you plug, plug the a, iPhone a normal, into it? Can you just plug a normal USB cable into it and, and charge every single other phone on the planet that doesn't use a proprietary charger? Which is no, it'll only work iPhone? with iPhones because it, it recognizes the um, little Apple logo... And if it doesn't see the Apple logo, it'll send a billion volts or like a lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> and millions of little pieces. It very well may. I don't know. Um, no. I, I'm not sure if it's only iPhone compatible. I would think that it would charge other USB devices, but I believe that one of the guys at the store tried that, and it didn't quite work. So um, for now, I'm just going to go out and say that it's an iPhone-only thing, but I could be wrong, and I'm going to have to check the packaging Does and double-check that. Does it support the new, uh, the new iPhone chargers, or do you have to upgrade all your accessories and hardware and everything? It's, it's merely a USB, USB connection. USB port, yep. yeah. So it, it my, could very well do it. My experience has been on my computer. I've got an always-on charge port on there. Mm -hmm. That is an iPhone charger, and I tried to plug my BlackBerry into it, and my BlackBerry won't charge from it because it doesn't supply enough power. So, you know, your Android device might want to draw too much power, in which case that device will probably could shut off and it may not provide the power. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, it's, it's basically like four AA batteries, which is about the same power as your battery pack is in your phone. So I don't see why it wouldn't be able to still charge any phone. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to say. I'll put it through the tests. Now, we've got a few other really good comments that have just come through. Um, Fernando suggests that gaffer's tape is also really good to cover the brand of your camera. We were talking about, you know, 
different straps to mask the kind of camera we have. So why not put a little bit of gaffer tape on the brand, mm -hmm. cover it one step further? Cosmo Music is a great place. You can get a huge roll of gaffer's tape for, I think it was like 24 bucks. There you go. I know Henry's carries it too. Uh, we don't have it in New Market. We have special ordered it in for people. I believe it's around, you know, close to that, if not a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but you get a big roll of it too. Uh, Blake suggests that he keeps Allen keys uh, for tripod or other attachments and a multi-tool. Now that is actually on my list. Um, mm -hmm. A good, strong leather belt. One of the best things you could ever invest in. I've had this thing for almost 20 years now. Um, excellent belt. And a leather man. I've got two leather man. Uh, the first one broke. The, the, the screwdriver piece broke off, and the leather man rep was actually in the store one day. I said, oh, you had a problem with your leather man? Went out to her car, came back in, gave me a brand new one. So, awesome. Nice. These things... Like, you could literally hammer nails with a Leatherman. It's not just a normal uh, multi-tool. These things are literally built to do whatever you need to do with them. Knives, they're sharper than sharp can be, I must say. Uh, <laughs> um, all kinds of different tools on there that work really well for all kinds of things. So They come in excellent. handy all the time. All the time. I wear this every day. Yeah. Uh, when I'm at work at Henry's and, you know, I just got to open a box, bam, um, you name it. The other day I was cleaning something and something got stuck inside. You know, you pop it right out. It's awesome. On cold days, gloves. These are the Aquatech gloves. Now, everybody has a different opinion on gloves. I really do prefer the Aquatech because you can just take your finger, slide it through, and now your finger's out. You don't have that magnet thing on the back that has to clip down. So it's out when you need it. And then you can actually put it in a separate layer inside, so just the, the pad of your finger is showing. So if you want to use your iPod, but you don't want your whole fingertip to get cold, now just the pad of your finger is showing. Or you can put it all the way in and nothing is showing. And the same thing with your thumb, just the pad or the entire thumb. And it's great because the strap goes all the way around, so you don't have to worry about snow or anything getting up inside. Perfectly secure. I've had these things, washed them in the machine over and over again. I had them for about three years already. And again, thank you, Navi. Navi hooked me up with some of these. And but now that it's summer, we don't have to worry about that anymore. There you go. Gone. No more gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite summer yet, but it is getting close. It's summer. <laughs> oh, also, and I was going to get into these things. I've got my little bag here beside me. Some really good things that I always carry on day trips just because you never know. Now, I have to say, Day Tripper Photo has been around for over five years now, and we've only had one rain problem, and that was a Joker Hill session that we had to, we did a redo of it, and it was fantastic. Even today, we still learned a lot. Rain ponchos. $4 for a big rain poncho to throw over yourself, or the rain sleeve for your camera. These guys are $8 for a package of two. They just go over your camera, put your hand in there like Bubble Boy, hang on to your camera. It even has a little piece where the eye cup will come off and feed right. inside. Um, these things are fantastic. I usually keep a bunch of those with me as well. And last year, Shelly picked me up these really awesome things, which thank God I haven't needed to use yet. Um, these are called uh, grabber warmers. Excellent little thing to keep with you when you're going out on a cold day trip. That way you don't have to worry about freezing your hands off. They fit right inside. They stick to the palm of your hand. And uh, they're fantastic to use. And they work for, as they say, up to seven hours, hmm. which isn't quite as long as our day trips are, but that's why there's two in a package. And there's also the body warmer. They literally just peel, stick to your chest, and they keep you warm for up to 12 hours. Um, I was watching Jimmy Kimmel last night, and he had a guest on there. And I guess they were doing a lot of shooting in, in Vancouver. That's where it was. And the girl was saying that uh, they put these in some spots that keep them warm. Nothing like sticking something that uses chemicals to heat up to your body. In your nether regions. I can't see anything going wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Um, make, make sure you keep one of these things. What's that? Oh, model release form. Hmm. Model release form. 
always have a couple of these you know if you're going somewhere and you're taking a photo of someone and you want to use that photo for some particular application uh, sell that photo or distribute it in any way if you just take a little bit of extra time and get get anybody that's in it to sign one of these things then mm -hmm. you've, you've covered your bases that's an excellent idea fantastic now on our day trips we usually have folks sign those just because mm -hmm. I will be using some images for promotional purposes um, we're in Algonquin, I take a nice shot, you're sitting there in the middle of, you know, Ragged Falls, and I want to put it on the website, it's nice to be able to have permission to do that, so I ask all of my day tripper folks to do that. Um, the fun stuff. Sparklers? We do that. Sprinklers, yeah, little, little sparklers. Now, I've got a bag full of these things, in all different sizes, because on day trips you could just never have too many sparklers. Um... Um, yeah, still got some more. Hang on. There we go, different sizes. Uh, yeah, still got some more. There we go. Oops, I'm leaking. Anyway. <laughs> do, you, do your neighbors know what's beside them? <laughs> they have place no grew up like a Roman candle. You put that thing near one of those body warmers and poof, the whole house comes out. <laughs> Never mind a body warmer. The power charger for my Mac heats up. It'll probably blow these things up. Yeah, turn on one of the Brinkmans near those things. <laughs> oh. You know what? I bet you anything, a brakeman could light one of these. We'll I bet have to you test anything. That. We will test that. That's actually on my list of things to do. Um, so, yeah, lots of really cool things. Navi also suggests a snack. Definitely a good idea to keep some snacks with you water, extra liquids, you know, some sort of little morsels to munch on. And Darren, who has Darren, Darren needs some Snickers bars, too. Who has the best wife on earth? Yes, she comes home, and she brings me a big old pizza just for me. Thank you, Shelly. Yeah, you've got a pretty cool wife, too, there, Gabe. <laughs> it's not quite Shelly, but, you know, it's okay. <laughs> All right, so we've gone over a lot of the different things that we usually carry in our bags, and it's really great that we had a, an opportunity to talk about these things. Um, we're going to give a quick little tip. Uh, Choose a bag not thinking that it's for one or not thinking that it's for everything. Choose a bag because it'll address a certain need. Um, for example, if I'm just going out walking around the block, I'll usually just put on my think tank belt. Mm -hmm. These things are so convenient. Oh, good timing. My light just turned down. Let's fix that. There we go. They're so convenient because you can clip it on, spin it around. And you've got a whole bat belt of different things that you can connect now. So I'm going to show you here. This is the large lens drop-in from Think Tank. It's absolutely huge inside. I've actually fit a, a Sigma 150 to 500 using this thing. Um, and because of the way it cinches up, these little pieces here will actually cinch right in, close up completely, so I can put a quarter in this thing, and it won't just drop out and fall. So really, really handy to have. And they strap on. They've got a little plastic insert here. This goes on the inside. And can you see the little bullet buckle things? Slides right inside. Goes in and locks tight. So now, anything I want, I can just fit in there. The batteries, some pens. You never know. My flashlight. A lens. Go figure. And then cinch it up, and you don't have to worry about anything falling out at all. It's always nice and protected, nothing will... So, super handy to have. I've got two of these lens pouches that I use. There's one. There's another. So I can have a lens on one side and a bunch of crap on the other side. Awesome stuff. Once again, Think Tank is so cool. All right. Yeah, there's a mess. A sparkler residue all around me. I'm going to ignite. Just watch. <laughs> wow. Okay. Anything else to add, guys? No, I think that's about it. Cool. All right. Well, I think we're pretty much good for the day. We've gone through our normal allotted time. And, uh, yeah, so remember, think functional. Think what you're going to use a bag for. Buy a bag for a specific purpose, not just one bag for everything. It doesn't work that way, guys. It just doesn't. Um, if you have any questions, mm. please feel free to get a hold of any of us. Uh, we each have our own area of expertise. If you need to talk retail or learn about new gear, I'm happy to spend time with you. If you would love to get some better 
uh, photos, if you're trying to sell your home, if you need some real estate photography, Darren, absolutely the man. You can get a hold of Darren at DG Photo or DG Virtual Tours dot com. Put you on the spot. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, um, Gabriel is doing all kinds of things. Wedding photography, portrait photography, many, many other things as well. And where can people mm -hmm. get a hold of you, Gabe? Uh, Bousquetphotography.ca uh, or Gabriel Bousquetphotography.ca. Beautiful. Guys, thank you so much for being on the show tonight and every night. It's absolutely so much fun. I look forward to doing this every week. And if any folks have any questions, get a hold of us. Brian at daytripperphoto.com or if you'd like to sign up for day trips, because I do run day trips. Uh, the next one coming up will be Algonquin Park. Actually, we're going for our sunrise in Algonquin. Mm. Both of these guys are going to be instructing with me. Looking We've got the bus. To oh, it's going to be great. We've got the bus booked. We're leaving nice and early in the morning. We're going to get up there for sunrise. I'm not looking um, forward to that. I know. I never look forward <laughs> to the morning. I'm not a morning person. But uh, it goes so now, fast. It's worth the price of admission just to see me awake that early. <laughs> <laughs> That's something to look forward to. <laughs> you can, like, poke me in the eyeball, and it won't register for, like, three minutes. It's really weird. <laughs> we'll have to test that theory. Stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs> anyway, April 28th, Sunday, April 28th, and you can register. There's still some spaces left. The spaces are starting to fill up pretty quickly, and... Uh... <laughs> Come with us on Day Tripper Photo. We have lots of fun. Bozo with uh, Brian. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks again for being on the show, and thanks for all you guys for watching and for contributing with your questions and your comments. It certainly does make for a better show for everybody. And, uh, yeah, keep on joining in. Tell your friends, tell your family, and tell your dog because this is a show worth watching. All right, guys. Have a great night, and see you next week. See ya.